everyone welcome once again to unified us youtube channel i'd like to say a big congratulations to all the latest uk RN and for everyone looking forward to sit for their exam we wish you all the very best ask is simple don't just stop practicing keep practicing and by the special grace of god you will pass your exam at one sitting today i'm going to be taking us through one of the skill stations in oski the in-hospital resuscitation is a skill like i said and it is six minutes so it's a talking station you're going to have a mannequin and um, the mannequin is uh, the scenario is you met a patient unconscious and then you want to do a cp how for that patient it is just within a space of six minutes so i'm going to be taking us through it step by step the first thing is you want to check for scene safety of course you want to be sure that that scene is safe for you and your patient and then you go ahead to call out the patient if there's going to be any response and how do you do this you shake the patient's shoulder hello hello can you hear me you can see that there is no response so you're going to shout for help and the tone of your voice in shouting for help matters you know this is an emergency situation so you have to shout um not using a low tone you have to shout uh, so that people can actually hear you and if there's an emergency bossa you pull the bossa after that you want to be checking you want to be assessing your patient so the first thing you need to do is to check for the airway if there's any obstruction to the airway so you do a health it a chin lift you're checking the airway if there's any obstruction you can see there's no obstruction to the airway and then you want to be checking for sign of life as well you want to be looking you want to be listening and feeling so what are you looking for? You are looking at the patient's chest, if there's any chest movement. And uh, what are you listening to? You are going to be listening at the patient's mouth for any sound of breathing, for any sign of life. And you will be feeling for air on the patient's cheek. So you're going to put your head near the patient's mouth so that you can feel, near the patient's cheeks rather, so that you can feel for air. So once you see there is no sign of life, the next thing is you're going to start your CPR. So I'm going to be um, taking us through, I'm going to be practicalizing the in-hospital resuscitation and I will also teach alongside. All right now, so I'm assessing my scene. I'm assessing my scene for scene safety. I can see my scene is safe for me to approach and then this patient on the floor. I'm going to be shaking the shoulder now. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Are you okay? I see that there's no response. I shout for help. Help! Help! And if there's an emergency bossa, I'm going to pull the emergency bossa. So while waiting for help, I'm going to be checking the airway for any obstruction. So I do a air tilt, chin lift, and I'm checking the airway for any obstruction. I can see there's no sign of obstruction. So I'm going to be checking for signs of life. So I'll be looking, listening, and feeling. What am I looking for? I'm looking at the chest for any chest movement so i'm looking at it i can see there's no chest movement and then i'm going to be listening at the mouth for any sound of breathing i can see there's no sound of breathing i'm feeling putting my head towards the patient cheeks to feel for air so i'm feeling for here i can see there's no sign of life so my patient is already on their back in the, and they are lying on the hard surface at this point the help has arrived so I'm going to tell the help, can you please call double two double two? There's an adult cardiac arrest in Oski room eight and tell them to come with a crash trolley and the bag valve mask. So while waiting for that, I'm going to be starting my compressions. I'll be giving 100 to 120 compressions per minute at a ratio of 30 compressions to two rescue breaths at a depth of five to six centimeters. So I'm placing the heel of my hands over each other and I put it on the lower half of the sternum ensuring that i don't apply pressure on the ribs neither on the abdomen assessor i start the compression now so i ensure my hands are straight and my elbows are locked one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And I'm going to be giving two rescue breaths. So I do a healthy chin lift. I put the back valve mask covering the nose and the mouth of the patient. So I give the first rescue breath and I watch for the rise and fall of the chest before I give the second 
rescue bread. All right, so I've done that. I'm continuing with the chest compressions, 30 compressions to two rescue breads at a rate of 100 to 120 uh, compressions per minute. Okay, so I after each compression, like I said, you should always wait for the recoil of the chest to ensure that you are given um, the accurate compressions. Now, the assessor tells me that the help, the um, the crash uh, team have arrived, the resuscitative team have arrived. All right, so thank you for coming. Uh, talking about the situation, my name is Funke. I'm one of the nurses working in this unit. I was just um, passing by and I met this unknown patient on the floor. That is the situation. And about the background, I really don't know much about this patient. I tried to call for response and I saw that there was no response. So with the assessment, I do, did a exit chin lift to check for any airway obstruction. I saw there was no airway obstruction and I do a look, listen and feeling. I was looking at the chest for the uh, move, any movement. I saw there was no movement and then there was no sign of um, sign of life at all i've already before that time i've already called out for help i have given uh, 100 to 120 compressions per minute at a ratio of 30 compressions to two rescue breaths i still see that um, this patient has not uh, is still not uh, conscious there's no response yet so my recommendation is that you continue with the chest compressions at the rate of 100 to 120 cycles per minute okay now let's say that um, this assessor tells you that the patient is now awake so what is going to be your response all right so my response is going to be that i'll be handing over this patient to the itu nurses so i'm handing over the patient to the itu nurse now hello good morning um my name is funke I'm one of the nurses in this unit. I was just uh, walking, passing by, and I saw this unknown patient on the floor. I tried to call out um, the patient, and uh, there was no response. So, uh, with the background, I really don't know much about him. All I knew was I checked out for sign of life, and I saw that there was no sign of life. So, I had to call out for help. And with the assessment, I checked for on uh, the airway. There was no obstruction. And uh, I looked, listen, and feel. I saw there was no sign of life. So I started uh, my CP house. So I've given 100 to 120 uh, compressions per minute at a depth of 5 to 6 centimeters at a ratio of 30 compressions to 2 rescue breaths. So after that, the patient, um, there was sign of life and the patient started responding, which was a good one. So my recommendation is that you uh, find out, you carry out more investigations just to find out what could be the cost of this, uh, what could have um, made this patient to go unconscious, what could be the cost of this um, cardiac arrest and the assessor can now ask you that what do you think could be the cause of a cardiac arrest so you can tell the assessor that it could be hypovolemia it could be hyposia and some other things so that is how to go about this station it's a simple station thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you some other time if you have any comments you can drop it in the comment section and don't forget to watch um our other videos on our youtube channel and do subscribe to it as well.